Hello, good morning everybody. This is uh, another lesson on biology and geology. Today I'm going to speak about plant organs. Most plants, those plants that have well differentiated tissues, I mean all of the plants except mosses and liverworts, all of them have uh, organs. Which are those organs? Well, there are a lot in plants, but the most basic ones that most plants share are roots, stems and leaves. So today I'm going to explain what are those parts and their functions. Let's start with the roots. Roots are these kind of structures that they are usually underground and that has a lot of, they have a lot of branches. As you can see, there are branches everywhere. These uh, structures, roots, has, they have different functions. As you can see here, main functions of the roots are the absorption of water and mineral salt from the soil. So, as you already know, most plants take water and salt by their roots, which is important for their nutrition. Also, they store food reserves. So inside the roots, some plants can store, can keep, can save some food nutrients like sugars basically, carbohydrates, water, like uh, carrots and beets beads are remolacha in Spanish, which is very sweet. And so these are special roots that they are very thick to keep, to preserve some energy, some nutrients, uh, so they store food reserves. And what else? The last and but not least function is that they anchor, they roots fix the plant to the soil. And that's an essential part because without roots, the plant cannot grow up, cannot, uh, cannot stay in the, uh, fixed to the, to the soil. That is very important. What else? What is the structure of the root? Well, basically, they have a main or primary root. This is the primary root, the most important one. Okay. The central one, which is usually thicker and goes very deep. It grows in depth. Also, there are some secondary or even tertiary roots. As you can see, they grow uh, horizontally. Primary root grows vertically and secondary and tertiary roots horizontally and they are usually 
uh, thinner than the primary root and the tertiary root are thinner than the secondary root and so on. What else? This structure root and the root branches, the primary root, secondary root and so on, they have these tiny, let's say, hairs, root hairs are called, that they Ha they have the function of absorption. So, thanks to these hair roots, the plant can take water and salt from the soil. So the absorption is carried out by these hair roots, that they are in these primary and secondary roots. The root is uh, growing, or it grows, in certain regions. So, in this terminal part of the primary root, there are a lot of cells that they are multiplying uh, very fast and this is the main area where the root is growing also at the the tip of the primary root you can see a root cap root cap is a an, an structure that protects it's very uh, it's hard and protect the tip of the root so it can dig deeper and deeper uh, without harming the these life cells that they are growing so it's, it's a protection to dig deeper and deeper and i think this is uh, the most important parts of the root also i would like to say that in this image I use this image of a of a tree growing over a temple stone temple in Cambodia uh, as you can see here you can see the three main organs you can see stems leaves but also roots uh, roots are usually underground but in this case some plants can uh they they have roots aerial roots which is in this case anyway roots i think the, this is clear functions absorb water and soil and salt from the soil they can store food and anchor the plant to the to the ground stems this is the second organ. Stem is a long and thin structure that uh, has these functions. They keep, stems keep the plant vertical, which is very important for the plant. Imagine that a plant needs uh, sunlight. Okay, this is our plant. This is our plant, it needs sunlight. So plants usually need to grow very tall because, because they sometimes they compete for this sunlight. Imagine that here there is another plant that grows bigger and the shade it doesn't allow to this plant to get enough sunlight. So, so they need to grow high. St uh, but they don't have a skeleton to keep them straight. So stems, stems 
has this function to keep the plant vertical which is very important also without roots they cannot grow very high because this is like the base to keep them stand vertically so this is the first function to keep the plant vertical they also transport substances we will see this in the probably next lesson which is about nutrition in plants as you can imagine roots take water and salt from the soil but these nutrients this inorganic material needs to go to the leaves and water and salt goes through the leaves by some tubes some tubes inside the stems and goes to the leaves so they transport substances the stems also we will see that uh, when the photosynthesis is done the organic matter needs to go to the rest of the plant to the all the cells so it also transport the organic matter it's like a highway a highway with two two ways also they can store some food some stems keep uh, some nutrients or water inside the, the stem as a reservoir for the if the conditions become worse there's some scarcity on nutrients in future so they can store each these uh, nutrients a potato this is the example in, in your book it's a kind of stem a modified stem that grows underground in this case between their roots basically and we eat potatoes because they have a lot of nutrients carbohydrates basically and vitamins what is the structure of the stem i think it's quite simple there are some parts thicker parts that they are called nodes right they are thicker and there are some thinner parts these are nodes there are thinner parts let me there are thinner parts that they are called internodes okay between two nodes good uh, in these nodes you can see that the plant grows horizontally right because in the nodes you can distinguish some branches leaves that grows horizontally and these buds gemas axillary bands buds sorry uh, are like proto leaves and proto branches from here can grow another leaf okay or another branch so at these nodes the plant grows horizontally and the plant grow vertically especially at the apical bud the apical bud has a lot of cells that they are multiplying and these cells or this growth make the stem grows vertically okay there are a lot of cells that they are multiplying so this is the point where the plant grows bigger 
vertically. The apical bud. Es la yema terminal, at the end, at the tip of the plant. And that's all. That's all for the stems. Now we need to talk about leaves. Okay, here I couldn't find an image of a of a leaf similar to the to the image that you have in your book, page number 100, 141. So I try I do my best to to mimic the image. So leaves. Leaves are these structures, these organs that have they have a, a flat um, shape, right? They are usually, if you imagine a leaf, right? You, you, you can draw something like this. Something rounded and, rounded and flat. So, but they are different shapes. What else? They have green color. Green color due to uh, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a pigment, as you know, that it's found in... This is the plant cell. The nucleus in the side, the back wall. And one of the organelles are called chloroplast. Inside these organelles, there is a pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll reacts to the sunlight and takes that energy to transform the inorganic matter into organic matter in a reaction which is called photosynthesis. And we will see it uh, in next lessons. And this chlorophyll is green. So that's the reason these leaves and most plants have this green color. And also they are essential, leaves are essential for uh, the nutrition of the plant. Let's see first the structure. And then I will explain briefly this, what, what does it mean? A leaf has two par three parts. The leaf sheath, the petiole, and the blade. Okay? The blade is the white flat part of the leaf that that everybody understand that is a leaf is the, the, this part the white flat part right and um, blade also in english means uh, the, the blade is like the the sharp part of a knife okay so it's similar to a, to a knife. Well, maybe that can help you to, to remember this word, blade. Anyway, so this is the, the big part. Then you can find the petiole. The petiole is this kind of branch that uh, fix the blade to the stem. To the stem, sorry. Okay, this is the stem, this is the blade, the petiole. Put together the blade with the stem. And the leaf sheath is the join, the connection, the join between the petiole and the stem. And these are the main parts. Leaf sheath, petiole and blade. Now let's see what is inside the blade or different parts that we can distinguish 
There are a lot of them. Here in your book, you can find four parts. So let's learn this. Okay, the tip of the leaf, la punta, the tip, is the apex. Then you have two sides of the blade. You have the top side, la parte de encima, underside, la parte de abajo, top side, in Spanish, haz, the underside, and this. Right, so then you have a system of veins. There are like main similar to the roots. So, so there's a main central vein. And from that principal vein, you, you can see secondary ones and tertiary ones. Sometimes you can see these like tiny ramifications. So what's the purpose of this? these veins what is the role that they play in the leaf veins give the leaf some support keep the shape of the it's like the skeleton of the leaf keep the shape the shape without these veins that they are a little bit uh harder than the rest of the of the leaf it's like a structure and a skeleton to keep the shape of the leaf and also it's like a pipeline it's, un, it's a pipeline system it's, it's un sistema de tuberías to to transport nutrients from the stem to the to every cell of the leaf and also when photosynthesis has uh, been produced the result of uh, photosynthesis has to go back to the stem and all the parts of the of the plant so this transport is uh, produced thanks to this system of veins. Okay, good. So these are the main parts. In page number 141, you can see a key for classification of leaves. I'm not going to ask you for that, but the I mean, if you like this this topic, if you have the opportunity uh, after this quarantine, that go to a park, go to to a forest, and you can take a look to the trees, leaves. You can I try to identify or classify them, taking a look to the shape, number of leaves if they are simple, if they are uh, compound leaves, uh, taking a look to the edge of the leaf, if it's, uh, or if the shape is like a needle, anyway. So, this classification you can take a look, but I'm not going to, to ask you for that. And also, I leave this link on the description is just a very simple explanation of the uh, leaves and their parts what about the nutrition yes what about the nutrition processes that they, that take place in the leaves well there are two processes one is photosynthesis and also the other one is gas exchange photosynthesis is produced in 
plant cells that they are basically on the leaves. And as you know, this process transforms the orga inorganic matter into organic matter thanks to the sunlight, but also plants need to exchange gases with the atmosphere. Basically, they take CO2 and they uh, produce oxygen, but also they need to breathe, we will see it, and, and the chains are the opposite. They have to take oxygen and they produce carbon dioxide. Okay, so take a look to this uh, plant organs and I will I will see you in the next video bye